Hi, I'm Mark Lackey, and I'd like to introduce you to the structure of the major triad. All right, so let's build a triad, then explore what it is about the structure of a particular triad that might make it, more specifically, a major triad. But what's a triad? Well, a triad is simply a group of three interrelated things, but in a musical context, a triad refers to a chord with three notes. Now, in the Western musical tradition, we usually build chords by stacking up thirds. In other words, we start from a particular note. In this case, we're starting on the second space of the bass staff with the note C3. And we're going to go up a third from C, C, D, E. Now from E, we'll go up a third again, E, F, G. And now we have a chord with three notes, and they're stacked in thirds. This is a triad. By the way, we call this business of stacking chords in thirds tertian harmony. The Western musical tradition is characterized primarily by chords with tertian harmony. And if we want to build more sophisticated chords, we simply add more thirds. We might have a note with four chords in it, like this major seventh chord or even a chord with five notes or more. It's a major ninth chord that you might run into in a jazz context or in impressionistic music. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. For now, let's focus on this triad, C, E, G. Now here comes the tricky part. If you take these notes, C, E, G, and you jumble them around, you still have C, E, G. Here's what I mean. Take the E, move it up an octave, and we still have the chord C, E, G. It's the same chord. In effect, it's going to have the same function in a musical context. Likewise, we could take the C and move it down an octave. And we still have a C triad of some sort. Now, we would still say that this chord is a tertian harmony. Even though we can't see the thirds quite as easily, uh, it's still a group of notes that could be stacked in thirds very easily. So we take the E, move it down an octave, take the C, move it up an octave, and we're back where we started. Okay, so let's take our simple triad, C, E, G, and learn more. First of all, each note has a special name. We built upon C, and so we will call C the root of this triad. If I ask you what member of the chord is C, you would say C is the root of the chord. Even if C is above the other notes, below the other notes, there's more than one C, C in the chord C, E, G is the root. Next, we have the note E, and E is a third above C, C, D, E. And so, E is the third of the chord C, E, G. Finally, we have the note G, and G is a fifth above C. We have C, D, E, F, G. And so G is called the fifth of the chord. If I ask you what member of the chord is G, you would say G is the fifth of the chord C, E, G. So there are the notes in our triad. But wait, what kind of triad is it? What is the quality of the triad? Triads can have different qualities. By that I mean major, minor, diminished, or augmented. These are the four possible qualities for a triad. These are the qualities of the various triads. The major is the most common. The minor is also perhaps uh, equally common, major and minor. Diminished we see a little less often. Augmented is rather rare. So these are the qualities of the various triads. Today we're talking about the major triad, and sure enough, C, E, G gives us a major triad. Major triads have the following structure. From the root up to the third must be a major third. So C up to D is a whole step. D up to E is a whole step. Or perhaps you learned the major third as four semitones, four half steps. So there's C, 
one, two, three, four. So C up to E is a major third. A major triad must have a major third above the root. Next, we stack a minor third. So from that E, we go up a minor third to G to complete our triad. So we have major third, minor third in the major triad. Finally, notice that the interval from C up to G is a perfect fifth. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the notes of the chord. C is the root of the chord, and so we call this a C major triad. The root gives the chord its name, so this is a C major triad. The third gives it its quality, so it's a C major triad, together with the fifth, the perfect fifth that we expect to find in major triads. It's also true for minor triads. And again, we have an, a minor third. We have a minor third that results from the interval from the third to the fifth. So my major triads always have this structure, major third on the bottom, minor third on top. Or if you're doing all your measuring from the root, go up a major third, and then go back to the root and go up a perfect fifth. Now this is easy enough to see if we start on the note C because we're just using the natural notes. The C major scale, perhaps the easiest to learn because it's all natural notes. But let's say we want to build a major triad on the note D. D is given to us as the root of our major triad. We use the same principles and we build the same structure, but this time we're building from D. So from D we need to go up a major third. D up a whole step is E, D up to E, and then E up a whole step is not F, but F sharp. And so we have F sharp as the third of our chord. So the F sharp produces a major third above D. Finally, we need to add a perfect fifth above D. D up a perfect fifth, as you've memorized, I hope, is an A natural. And so this is the structure of our D major triad. And again, it's a D major triad if we have D, F sharp, A, even if we move the notes around like this. As long as we have the notes D, F sharp, A, we're dealing with a D major triad. And that structure can always be reduced down to the stack of thirds that you see on the screen here. I hope this video has been helpful. Please subscribe to my channel, check out marklackey.net, and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching.